Humans have always looked for inspiration from nature to build our own incredible structures or improve upon flawed design ideas. But animals are amazing builders in their own right. And while most animals are content with finding a slightly softer and more sheltered space to sleep for the night, well, not the trapdoor spider, not the oven bird, and definitely not compass termites, but did you know birds' nest soup is an actual thing? Here are 15 amazing homes built by animal architects. Meantime, they practice making a bower and dancing for each other. <laughs> Number 15. Sociable Weaver Bird Nests Sociable weaver nests are a sight to behold. The nests of these remarkable birds are next level. Plus, they use and maintain the nest throughout the year. They nest in colonies as small as 10 individuals and all the way up to 400 or 500 birds. Instantly recognizable, their nests can reach phenomenal heights and from a distance can look like a haystack stuck up in a tree or telephone pole. In Africa's Kalahari Desert, sparrow-sized sociable weaver's nesting structures that act like avian apartment complexes housing weaver families by the hundreds. This also means the weavers are also ecosystem engineers because their communal nest colonies support a range of other wildlife. Over the years, the birds' droppings enrich the soil with nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium, resulting in the tree growing more leaves, which giraffes eat, and providing more shade, which antelopes use in the heat of the summer, than trees without weaver nests. The nests themselves do an amazing job of staying cool in summer and warm in winter, which may be why a half dozen other bird species vie for unoccupied nest chambers. Even cheetahs climb into the trees to sprawl over the domed roof of the nest and soak up the sun. You want to know a little secret? If you smash the like button, subscribe, and click the notification bell, you'll have superpowers for the rest of your life. So what are you waiting for? Time to fly! Number 14. Montezuma Hanging Nest the Montezuma bird is a tropical bird, a resident breeder in the Caribbean coastal lowlands from southeastern Mexico to central Panama. And as you can see, they build nests quite uniquely their own, hanging nests. This colonial breeder builds a hanging woven nest of fibers and vines high in a tree and complicated yet beautiful, and don't forget safe, place to start a family. The Montezuma live in colonies and are polygynous breeders, meaning that one male mates with many females. Each colony has a dominant male, which mates with most of the females following an elaborate bowing display. The female lays two dark spotted white or buff eggs which hatch in 15 days, the young fledge in 30. There are typically about 30 nests in a colony, but up to 172 have been recorded. Females build these nests, which may hang up to three feet or more below the branch, it's thought that this long, deep shape protects the young from predators and prevents eggs from falling out of the nest in heavy wind. Outside the breeding season, this species is quite mobile, with some seasonal movements, but tends to inhabit forest canopy, edges, and old plantations. Montezuma's unique nesting skills definitely add something special. <coughs> Number 13. Trapdoor Spiders A spider named Number 16, the world's longest-lived known trapdoor spider, passed away at the ripe old age of 43 years. Previously, researchers believed trapdoor spiders lived 25 years. However, more important than setting a record, Number 16 offers a life lesson on sustainability. Number 16 built her burrow in southwestern Australia when she was young. Like all female trapdoor spiders, she was a homebody, never leaving her burrow. She had to protect and maintain her burrow because, if it were damaged, mature trapdoor spiders cannot easily rebuild or locate. They cleverly camouflage their trapdoor and lay out trip lines so that when an insect triggers it, they leap out in surprise attack, dragging their prey into the burrow. Trapdoor spiders have eight eyes, a pair in the middle and three on each side. Their colors range from yellowish brown to reddish brown to black. They have powerful jaws and sharp fangs that stab downwards into its prey. Trapdoor spiders have eight legs that are thick and short, two fangs and two body parts which are the abdomen and the thorax. Their bodies are thinly covered with hairs and to make them even scarier, the trapdoor spider can run extremely fast. Number 12. 
red ovenbird dome nests. These birds have been hard at work setting up their new nest in time for the breeding season. The South American ovenbirds, also known as El Hornero or the house builder, go through a lot to create their home, complete with a dome-shaped roof which resembles an old-style wood-fired baker's oven and is the basis of the common name of this group of birds. The nest is constructed of mud with plant fibers mixed in for greater strength. The dome is about 12 inches in diameter, can weigh about 9 pounds, and the dome has a deep, narrow entrance. Although old nests physically last for several years, oven birds construct a new structure for each brood. Using clay or mud mixed with fibers, hair or straw, the male and female oven birds work together to build the walls of their nest gradually during the winter months, allowing the tropical sun to bake the mud until it's hard as a rock. Then they build a narrow, curved entrance and dividing wall to create the breeding chamber, which the female bird lines with grass and feathers, a process which can take months to complete. After mating, the female lays three to five eggs that hatch just after 20 days because of the warmth trapped inside the nest. Number 11. Spiral Beehives Ultimately made out of nectar from flowering plants, bees produce and store honey to use as sustenance when other food is scarce. But how does honey get from pollinators to your pantry? The answer is simple. Beehives. One species, the stingless bee, forms unique hives that form upward spirals of 10 to 20 layers. Each layer is one circle of a continuous spiral. Stingless bees store pollen and honey in honeycomb cells, which they make by chewing wax and bonding it into egg-shaped pots. Some species clump small, grape-like cells together while others arrange them in horizontal lines. The Carbonaria species, however, builds its hive in a clockwise spiral, regardless of the shape of the box it's kept in. The Australian stingless bee is not your average pollinator either. For starters, out of about 20,000 known bee species in the world, this bee is one of only 500 without stingers. That's not to say the bee is defenseless. Invasive beetles that have tried to infiltrate nests have found themselves suddenly covered in a brew of wax, mud, and plant resin, effectively mummified alive by bees. Stingless colonies also have been observed waging days-long territory wars against their stingless neighbors, resulting in hundreds of bee-on-bee -bee crimes and queens unceremoniously dethroned. Number 10. Ancient Termite Mounds the mounds, which are easily visible on Google Earth, are not nests. Rather, they are the result of the termites' slow and steady excavation of a network of interconnected underground tunnels. The termites' activities over thousands of years have resulted in huge quantities of soil deposited in approximately 200 million cone-shaped mounds. Researchers studying the vast landscape of 200 million cone-shaped mounds in northeast Brazil sampled soil from 11 locations and found that some began construction around 3,820 years ago and spread across 56 million acres. It represents a vast earth-moving endeavor, but the mounds are not individual termite nests. Instead, each one is a waste point where termite workers dump soil and other matter excavated in the production of a vast subterranean tunnel which they have used to traverse the landscape in search of food for millennia, a biological wonder akin to those of the ancient world, but with the civilization that built it still in residence. The termite super colony, which spans an area the size of Great Britain, has been under construction since the time of the pyramids in ancient Egypt. The amount of soil excavated is equivalent to 4,000 great pyramids of Giza, the best structures built by single insect species. Number 9. Bowerbird courtship nests. Turkeys strut, peacocks preen, and bowerbirds design. Some birds have stunning plumage, some birds have complicated mating dances, but bowerbirds are creative engineers. To attract females, the males build, decorate, and maintain elaborate structures, the avian equivalent of bachelor pads, called bowers. These take many forms, but all are constructed with gathered twigs and objects like brightly colored stones, fresh flowers, or iridescent insect skeletons that are specially placed for the most impressive display. They use two distinct types of architecture and have a keen eye for color as well. Once mating season rolls around, these birds start gathering sticks and using them to erect structures or love shacks, literally bright as crayons. There are 20 different bowerbird species and their plumage patterns vary dramatically. 
These animals are more numerous on the island of New Guinea and the South Pacific, but they're also found in specific areas of Australia. Number 8. Gigantic Texan Spiderweb More than just creepy, a massive spiderweb in Texas was also a surprising revelation for many arachnologists, aka spider nerds, when an enormous spiderweb was discovered at Lake Tawakoni State Park, it served as evidence that spiders can work together to weave a communal web. Rare events called megawebs have been known to happen in Texas after very heavy rains, not unlike what Austin has experienced in recent weeks. The temporary phenomenon involves hundreds of thousands of spiders living together in a giant spider web stretching across multiple trees. That first giant web was discovered back in 2007. The number of spiders who called the web home was likely in the thousands. If the thought of an army of spiders working together sends chills down your spine, hey, we get it. However, although this is the stuff of most people's nightmares, it's also the stuff of an archaeologist's dreams. Researchers believe that when a mega web happens, the different species of spiders tolerate each other's presence because food is plentiful. Small flies that swarm near water called midges abound after heavy rainfall, attracting the spider predators. Number 7. The Edible Nest Swiftlet Bird's nest soup is a soup made from the nest of one kind of cave-dwelling swift. It's regarded as a delicacy, health booster, life prolonger, and aphrodisiac in Asia, and is said to rejuvenate skin, clear up complexions, clean out the digestive tract, and cure lung cancer. Bird's nest soup was invented around 1750 by a Siam-based Chinese man named Hao Ying, who discovered the wind-eating swiftlets and learned that their nests were soluble in water. The soup is made by soaking and steaming the nests in water, and a bowl can fetch high prices. A tureen of soup for four people of nest of sea swallows with venomous snake and chrysanthemum petals with lemongrass lotus seeds and soup, with several drops of venom squeezed from the glands of a snake that pulled out a bag, can go for up to $100 or more in Hong Kong and is made from six nests. The translucent, gelatinous material used to make the bird's nest gives the soup richness and texture and was compared by an 18th century adventurer with the foam of wavecrest. The taste? One brave food sampler said it was sort of like a piece of paper. The nest material has little flavor and generally is seasoned to flavor. Would you eat bird's nest soup? Number 6. Caddisfly Pebble Larvae Caddisfly's larvae bind sand grains together to make protective cases, a tubular structure made of silk secreted from salivary glands near the mouth of the larvae and is started soon after the egg hatches. Various reinforcements may be incorporated into its structure. Creek-dwelling caddisfly larvae make themselves a case of stones to protect themselves from predators and weigh themselves down so they aren't swept downstream. Smart thinking, right? Glands under their chins work like a tape dispenser, producing a type of sticky silk that bonds the pebbles together. So far, humans have struggled to make a tape that bonds while wet, but these larvae have no trouble constructing their case entirely underwater. If scientists could mimic the silk, they might be able to repair things in other soggy spots, the human body, for example. The larvae eat periphyton, a blanket term that refers to the algae, diatoms, bacteria, and fungi that grow on clean rock surfaces. In some situations, the case serves as a mobile garden. But a great many more interesting lessons can be learned simply by watching an insect as small as a shirt collar button. Pebble Couture Number 5. Compass Termites In Australia's Northern Territory, termites build peculiar mounds that are mysteriously aligned to the Earth's magnetic field. They look like tombstones from a distance, but they're much larger. The magnetic termite mounds look relatively flat and they all face the same direction with their thinner edges facing the north and south like the needle of a compass. Various hypotheses have been advanced to account for this remarkable mound architecture. However, behavioral aspects of mound orientation have rarely been investigated. The currently accepted hypothesis considers mound orientation as an adaptation to local long-term environmental conditions to maintain a temperate plateau at the eastern face of the mound. The currently accepted hypothesis is that the precise alignment allows the termites to keep their homes comfortable. Northern Australia gets extremely hot during the day and cool at night, and researchers believe termites have somehow harnessed the power of the Earth's magnetism to strategically climate control their homes. A single nest may contain tens of thousands of termites to keep cool. 
To comfortably house all those insects, the mounds need to have just the right architecture. Number 4. Eastern Cape Hammercock The hammercock is a water bird, so a big tree next to a river is the ideal site for its nest. The hammercock shows great ingenuity by weaving large sticks or branches together to create a stable base for the nest and then adding smaller twigs to create the structure which includes many false entrances to fool predators like snakes and eagles. The hammercock uses its nest primarily for breeding and fixes it up every year in preparation for the breeding season. The hammercock nest is so big that other birds, like eagles, owls, they'll make their way into the nest on top. With some over 4 feet across and consisting of around 10,000 sticks, some of these nests are even strong and big enough to support a man's weight. The outside is generally adorned with different bright colored objects that the birds collect from around their home range. The hammercock is considered a bad omen in some African cultures. They believe that if a hammercock flies over your house or camp someone close to you will die. Others believe that if you go near a hammercock's nest, it will strike you with a lightning bolt. The hammercock takes a wide range of prey, mostly fish and amphibians, but shrimp, insects, and rodents are taken too. Number 3. The Beaver – Nature's Engineer Beavers are among the largest living rodents in the world. With powerful jaws and strong teeth, they fell trees in order to build homes and dams, often changing their environment in ways few other animals can. A beaver's home is called a lodge. Lodges are little dome-shaped houses made from woven sticks, grasses, and moss plastered with mud. They can be up to 8 feet wide and up to 3 feet high inside and built on the banks of ponds, on islands, or on lake shores, just barely above water level. Many lodges have an underwater back door for instant swimming access. Beavers have a tremendous impact on ecosystems as a result. They even build entire dams that alter the flow of rivers and can flood hundreds of acres. Dams prevent erosion and raise the water table, which helps purify the water as silt builds up and breaks down toxins. As sediment and debris build up, carbon increases and nitrogen decreases. The chemical changes alter the type of invertebrates, and the new water source attracts new species of birds, fish, and amphibians. Flooded timber dies off and a forest becomes an open water ecosystem. Just leave it to the beaver. Number 2. Weaver Ant Nests In other tropical and subtropical woodlands, scores of different ant species may share a single tree, but there is little room for coexistence where insects known as weaver ants make their home, in Australia and in Southern Asia, the other in parts of Africa. With their long legs, they aggressively dominate huge territories in the forest canopies, and locals simply call them tree ants. They make their soccer ball-sized nests among the branches by sewing leaves together. Each weaver ant colony inhabits from half a dozen to more than a hundred nests at any given time, forming a metropolis of boroughs and suburbs connected by busy commuter routes. A hierarchy of workers and soldiers maintain and defend this territory which spreads from treetops to the forest floor, staying in sync through constant communication. Scientists have likened weaver ant communication to a type of language with primitive syntax. Urban planners examine the organization of ant societies. Mathematicians draw upon analysis of ant behavior to devise parallel computing formulas where multiple problems are solved simultaneously. Ants serve as models in all kinds of studies. Number 1. Cathedral Termites A cathedral built by termites? This you gotta see. Last but not least, termites. The cathedral-like mounds are built by two species of termite, magnetic termites and cathedral termites, from a mixture of feces, mud, and wood, which forms a robust waterproof clay-like substance. The termites live underground, which requires an oxygen supply, and the mounds work like an air conditioning system funneling air down to the colony below. This also feeds the termite which requires the right level of warmth and humidity, the ultimate in sustainable climate control. DNA sequencing found the forebearers, called nasute termites, colonized Australia three times in the past 20 million years or so and evolved from wood to grass feeding as they adapted to significant environmental changes, including increasingly arid conditions and the conversion of woodlands to grassland habitats. Now a prominent feature of the arid landscape down under, the mounds house millions of termites. 
A mound lives from 50 to 100 years and is thought that a single queen lives for the entire life of the mound. Those were 15 of the most amazing homes built by animal architects. Thanks for watching.